Hello, this is uh, Jeff Lightman, uh, the older girls uh, director, U U15 to U19 uh, girls director and assistant director of marketing. Uh, we're going to go ahead and, and get started um, in our TSC webinar series. Um, tonight, we're going to be tackling uh, nutrition, and we're going to do this as a two-part series. So tonight's going to be part one, um, and uh, Laura Eldridge, uh, one of our coaches, is going to join us. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and introduce Laura. Uh, Laura is a registered dietitian. Uh, she has a master's in exercise science and nutrition science. Um, she's certified uh, in strength and conditioning. Um, and she's been a TSC coach for the past seven years uh, with us, currently coaching our uh, older girls in our 0102 uh, Williamson Premier Group. Um, she, uh, Laura also is the uh, Brentwood Academy girls head coach and a chemistry teacher. So uh, please welcome Laura Eldridge. Yes, thank you, Jeff. Thank you for that introduction. Um, and thank you also, TSC, for having me. Um, I'm super excited to be here today and talk to you about nutrition. It's, it's very close to my heart. It's something I love. It's a passion. And any of you out there that have had me for a coach, you know that very well. Um, so I'm assuming some of you that may have had me for a coach have probably heard some of this before. So um, sports nutrition is, is our focus today, but really it's nutrition in general. So our schedule, we're gonna kind of go through a PowerPoint, um, basic nutrition and a PowerPoint of sports nutrition. Uh, I am a teacher, so I do like to talk and I'm gonna do my best not to make this a true lecture format. So we will have some question answer at the end. Um, first off with Coach Leitman, Leitman and I back and forth, and then I'm going to open it up to you guys. So as we go through this, I really am going to encourage some audience participation if possible. Um, Jeff, I think you may be able to see that better than me if we have some communication coming in. Yes. Okay. Um, so I will be asking you guys questions uh, throughout it and um, then at the end, I encourage you to jot down some questions for me, anything that comes to mind as we flow through, if I don't really nail down the topic that you're interested in or curious about. So first and foremost, we're gonna do basic nutrition. Basic starting at the bottom with the definition of nutrition. It's the process by which the body uses food to enable every organ, tissue, and cell to properly function. Bottom line here, if you don't have nutrition in your life, any kind of food, you're going to suffer kind of from the inside out. Um, so you won't have the energy or to facilitate growth. You won't grow. You don't have the energy to do anything. You, you can be a couch potato, which right now, since we're all stuck at home, is okay. But in, when we get back to real life, it's not going to work. Um, nutrition helps you maintain and repair things. So after a rough match or a three, four game weekend, you've got to maintain good nutrition to get everything back. And it also supports your immunity, which right now is also very important. So nutrition and energy is where we're going to go towards now, since that's what kind of sports nutrition is. Energy comes from calories. Um, I'm sure all of you have heard about calories before some good, some bad. Calories in general are just the body's fuel. That, that's it. What you put in is going to fuel what you do. This is very similar over on, on the right side of the screen. It's like gasoline. A car is not gonna run if you don't put gasoline in it. We will not run if we don't put food and nourishment into our bodies. So here's our first audience question. Um, where do calories come from? Does anyone have any idea where calories come from? So this is my test question. So I guess, Jeff, if you get some answers, throw them at me. Yeah, so if you guys want to go ahead and, and put that in the, the uh, chat for right now, um, and then we will use the Q&A later uh, for questions later. So go ahead and, uh, and put your comments uh, in the chat. Oh, I can see it. All right, Abby Frazier, food, fat, sugar, food, good. All right, good. Okay, this is working. I can see some chat. So all of us are saying food, which is, you're right, you're spot on. It does come from food, but let's get really specific here. Um, what types of food? So food is a very broad and general category. So I cannot 
here we go. So where do calories come from? Food is right. This plate right here is gonna be covered in food, but more specifically, what kinds of food? What, what do these colors mean um, when it comes to food? Good, I've seen a couple of correct answers come in. So here's, here's what we're looking at. Calories are coming from three things. Three things, they're called macronutrients. The word macro means bigger. So this is the majority of your diet. The first one is carbohydrates. This is sugar, fiber, and starch. Then you have protein, and then you have fats. So those are the only three areas where calories will come from. Now you have something else called micronutrients. Micro is smaller. This is gonna be your vitamins, your minerals, and water. Those are essential to the diet, but they're not gonna give you calories. Calories are coming from these three things. Over here on this side of the screen, we have something called MyPlate. Um, MyPlate uh, was issued, is, is issued by the government, essentially USDA, to, to help people eat, to help people create a well-balanced diet. So if you look at it, half of your plate over here is coming from fruits and vegetables, a quarter is from grains, and a quarter is from protein. The obvious one that sticks out here, protein. That is a macronutrient. Carbohydrates are gonna actually fall into vegetables, fruit, grains, and dairy. They're all over the place, and you'll see why here in a minute. And then, oops, and then fats are also laid in throughout. They're kind of, um, they don't get their own specific category on the plate, but they're involved in everything. So macronutrients, carbohydrates, protein, fat, micronutrients, vitamins, minerals, and water. So here's another question. Um, describe an ideal meal based on the MyPlate model. Begin with your protein. So this is what many parents out there go through each night trying to create a meal for their family. They're building a MyPlate. So a protein that we want to start with um, oh, I got one coming through. All right, here we go. Chicken. All right, Caitlin wants chicken. So let's say grilled chicken. So that would fill your protein section. And then Abby Fraser says pasta. So pasta would fill your grain section. And salad over here. And maybe some apples. Good. Or you could have um, yogurt, or excuse me, you could have broccoli over here. And then yogurt or just a glass of milk on the side. So all of those are excellent answers. And here's just a picture of, of a plate built according to my plate. And it even follows the directions. Yours doesn't have to be on the right side and the left side and the top and the bottom, right? But this one follows that. So you got fruit, vegetable, grain, protein, and dairy. So that's a basic plate that you want all of your meals throughout the day to follow. And when I say meals, I mean breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So snacks are a little bit different, which I think we'll talk about here soon. So my plate covers meals. My plate covers basic nutrition. Now you guys are athletes. So our next stop is gonna be nutrition and performance. How do we take the food that we eat each day, breakfast, lunch, dinner, plus snacks, and utilize that to our best when on the field? What do we need more of? What do we need less of? Question, of the three macronutrients, carbs, protein, fat, which should make the majority of an athlete's plate? I got an automatic answer there. It came through. Let's see what we say. Sarah, good job. Sarah said carbs. Got some protein thrown in there. Good. I, that's usually the answer I get is protein. But actually, the answer is carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are... Carbohydrates are the body's preferred fuel source. As an athlete, as just, you don't have to be an elite athlete, just anyone. And when you're trying to do anything active, carbohydrates are where your first fuel is coming from. So right here on this slide, we have fuel source, sources and functions. I've kind of combined the two. Carbohydrates are the preferred fuel source. They're stored as glycogen in liver and muscle. Um, Glycogen is a term that you're going to hear in series number two with Ajit a lot. 
So glycogen is just how we store carbs. And when um, Ajit comes back in two weeks and does this session, he's gonna get really into how it's utilized and um, exactly which type of fuel is used when in a workout, which is gonna be pretty cool. We're gonna keep it fairly basic today. So carbohydrates, protein is essential for functional tissue. So you know you all probably associate protein with muscle which is true. Protein does assist with muscle development and repair, um, but it is also a huge component of organ protein and enzymes. Um, so enzymes are kind of the things that, that help us do work in the body. Then lastly, we have fat. Fat is stored throughout the body. It's used as an energy reserve, which we'll talk about here in a minute. All of these can be used for energy, but only one of them up here is the one that we want to utilize for energy, which is because it's just easier. Our body doesn't want to have to work super hard to create energy, which is what carbohydrates do well. All right, audience question. What types of food are considered carbohydrates? Go. This should be like, rattle them off. Rice, pasta. Bread, pasta, bread, pasta, bread, pasta, good. Awesome, okay, so we got the bread pasta down. You nailed it. Potatoes, there's another one. All of those are great carbohydrates, and those are quick carbs for you guys for um, pre-game or pre-game yeah, pre meals. Um, there are multiple other kinds of carbohydrates. So over in this picture and down here on the bottom, you do have breads. Um, you do have a pasta in there, but you also have cereal, rice, oats, fruit. Fruit is a huge, huge carbohydrate that a lot of people kind of forget about. Um, English muffins, Gatorade is a starchy liquid um, because it has a lot of sugar in it. Sugar is a carbohydrate. Starchy vegetables, you named one. That's going to be your potatoes. A good way to remember starchy vegetables are the round ones. So potatoes, peas, and corn, those are higher starch vegetables. Um, then your milk and your yogurt and your, well, I'll pause there. Milk and yogurt are going to have a high, a higher carbohydrate, but they're also going to have protein. So they're that one of those crossover groups. And then your beans and your leg, legumes are going to fall into this category too. So very briefly, I'm going to touch on your needs. Each day, athletes need between six to 10 grams per kilogram of body weight of carbohydrates. This is a broad number because this number is based on male or female, age, activity level, right? Are you in season? Are you out of season? Are you training three times a day? Are you training once? Are you injured? Right? All of that's going to play a role in how much you need. And calculating this is another area that Ajit's gonna kind of focus on. So if you have questions here, I'm more than happy to answer them, but just know that he's gonna get deeper into this next week. So in blue here, you see that carbohydrates are fuel for muscles and brain. This is one that a lot of people don't realize. Carbs actually fuel the brain. Um, so all of us are in school, well, we were in, we were in school. We're still learning every day though. Um, when you are attempting to learn or really focus in on something, if you don't have carbohydrates in your bloodstream, it makes it really difficult. So you start to get that really dazed, confused kind of thing. Same way if you're trying to um, do something athletic out on the field. So carbohydrates and performance, you guys did well on that one. Let's move to the next macronutrient. Oopsies. What types of food then are considered protein rich foods, which would fall into that purple protein category on my plate? Let's see, beef, steak, chicken, steak, protein bars. Oh, quinoa, okay. Uh, nuts, fish, beans, good. Very good guys. Eggs, that's a good one. So all of those are correct. Um, protein is going to come from, I've got a list of high protein snacks over here. These are kind of quick ones, but it is going to be most of your animal meats. Um, so steak, chicken, fish, um, eggs is a good source of protein. 
other ones that people might not think of are your nuts, seeds, and your legumes. So your legumes, when I say that, I'm referring to beans like black beans, um, cannellini beans, white beans, all those things. And then over here, this is a list of high protein just snacks that are simple and quick. And a lot of things I've said fall into there. One that I didn't mention was yogurt. So Greek yogurt in particular is gonna be very high in protein. So again, focusing briefly on the numbers, athletes require 1.2 to 2.0 grams per kilogram. Protein is the second highest macronutrient behind carbohydrates. So loading yourself up with protein and protein powders and shakes multiple times a day is really just expensive urine because you're not going to utilize all that you're putting in. You're just going to excrete it throughout the day. Um, so when we're looking at protein needs, it's not something we need to overdo, but it is an area that we can calculate for you. And again, Ajit will focus more on that. Um, our protein wants to be spaced throughout the day and definitely utilize post-workout to help with uh, recovery. All right, next one. Which types of foods are in the fat category? Go. I look quiet on this one. Oh, whoa, here we go. Uh, cake, candy, avocado, sugar, chips, bacon, oil, butter, candy, 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 chocolate. Okay. Good. So funny thing, sugar is actually a carbohydrate. So a lot of those candies are going to fall into the carbohydrate category. When we're talking about fats, we're going to talk more about, I heard somebody said it, avocados, our oils, olive oils, sunflower oil, uh, grapeseed oil, all of those will fall there. Um, fatty fishes. So this is salmon steak right here. Those are definitely high in, in, I'll just use this simple term, good fats or HDL. And then you have your nuts and your seeds, which I think somebody said almonds on there, which would definitely fall into this category. So with fats, we typically calculate the amount of fat you need after we do the, pro the carbohydrates and protein. So the portion that's left over is where fats come from. So there's not a specific, you need this many grams of fat, it just is kind of what you need after your main sources are filled. Car uh, excuse me, fat is used during exercise with carbohydrates. The amount you use will be dependent upon duration and intensity. This slide is a lot of what Ajit's going to talk about as well next week. Um, endurance exercise, so you guys, so soccer players, after 15 to 20 minutes, the body is going to begin to use fat as a fuel source. Its first go-to is, is that carbohydrate in the bloodstream and then your glycogen stores, but fat will be utilized, which is, makes it even more essential in our diets. My main message I want to get across to you guys is fat is not bad. You need fat in the diet. These kinds of fat over here on this slide, that's what we want to aim for. Okay. Um, like I said earlier, candy, a lot of candy and chocolate, they're gonna lean more towards the carbohydrate side anyways, which you need a lot more of. So go have a little, a little candy. All right, next up, hydration. So you can't talk about nutrition without talking about hydration and performance. Um, here's one more audience question. True or false, keep it simple for you. Water is the only source of fluid that aids in hydration of the body. True or false? What do we think? Oh, I got true, true, false, false, true, true. Okay, good. So let's think about this just real quick. When I say, I, I narrow this down to one thing, water. Only water will hydrate you. When you bite into an apple, is it juicy? Yeah, right? Um, when you drink coffee in the morning, is that liquid? Yeah. So the answer here is false. There are multiple other things in the diet that can assist with your hydration. It doesn't have to be water. Now, is water one of the purest sources? Yeah, which should be the majority of your hydration. But as you consume things throughout the day, you're getting fluid intake. So you're taking things in. So your goal with hydration is gonna to be to drink half of your body weight in ounces per day. 
this is this is your goal if you're not doing anything so down here in white fluid needs increase with exercise so if if you are maintaining this, if you're 155 pounds and you're drinking 77.5 ounces per day and you're playing two matches, one morning, one evening, your needs are drastically increased from this value. This is the basic, I'm just hanging out, sedentary all throughout the day, okay? Couple of things with hydration. Before an event, I'm gonna get into kind of timing of things here. You wanna aim for 16 ounces of fluid one to two hours before an event. This, this is important, one to two hours. If I, I wish I could see, I feel like I wish I was in the classroom so I could ask y'all to raise your hands, but how many of you guys have had that sloshy stomach because you chugged a bottle of water two seconds before you stepped on the field, right? That's what you wanna avoid. So you want your hydration to build as you lead up to an event. Um, as you're maintaining exercise, so high intensity training, game, whatever, you want to try to get eight ounces of fluid every 15 to 20 minutes. That's a lot. Um, really, ideally, we just want to sip as we go. Okay, so anytime your coach gives you a break, take a sip. Even if you're not thirsty, take a sip. Afterwards, no less than 24 ounces. This number will fluctuate based on the amount you lost which in order to determine best is with a scale, which most of you probably don't have on the field. So 24 ounces is a pretty good range to aim for. If you're working out or training, so any soccer game for more than an hour, a carbohydrate electrolyte beverage is good. This is Gatorade, uh, don't, don't make it tricky. You don't need to be fancy, Gatorade works perfect. Um, the chews work as well too. I know a lot of ECNL events have those on the sideline, those are great. And then high concentration carbohydrate drinks like fruit juice, soda, and energy drinks can cause stomach upsets. I know you've heard that before. Your coaches probably rave on that. You just want to avoid that pre-game and post-game to avoid any kind of stomach aches. So this next slide is just a very simple way of looking at ounces. So if we were talking about that 155 pound female, she was looking at about 77 ounces of water. That would be this Atlantic Coast bottle. So 20, 40, 60, we'll call it 80. She needs four of those just to live, not to work out, not to walk up and down the stairs, just to be. Okay, so you can kind of base your range off of that. The last thing before we go to some questions is sleep. Sleep is essential. If you do not sleep, nutrition doesn't really matter that much. Neither does your training regimen. Sleep is an essential component of everything. So this over here is getting the athlete ready. You see sleep up on the top. It's bigger than the rest for a reason. It affects your reaction time, your injury rates, your accuracy, technique, focus, everything. It can even lengthen your career for those of you that are trying to go on and play in college and beyond. You want to aim for six to eight hours a night, which is difficult sometimes, but you can make it a priority. So the main thing here is we really want to make sleep a priority, just like you do nutrition and your training. Um, next up, I believe we have some questions from Coach Leitman. All right, so Coach Laura, um, just a couple questions. So what is an ideal day? We've got a whole bunch of uh, athletes on here. Uh, what does an ideal day of eating look like for them? So um, ideally, all of us, number one, we wanna start out with breakfast. I know breakfast is a challenge for many people because we just don't feel like eating, but it's essential, especially if you want to become and you want to train like an elite athlete. So we want to have breakfast before we go to school. So I'm going to talk through a typical school day for most of you. So we have breakfast before school. Mid-morning, we're going to have some sort of pro, uh, carbohydrate plus protein snack. Then you're going to have your lunch. And when I talk breakfast, lunch, and dinner, remember I'm talking my plate meals. Okay, I'm not talking um, a Snickers ice cream bar and a pack of donuts, right? We want to have a loaded well, or well-planned out half your plate, fruits and vegetables, carbs, pro, um, grains, protein, and dairy. So you have your lunch then. After school, you have another snack, higher carbohydrate, moderate protein, because that's getting you ready for practice. So if you're going to school practice or if you're going to club practice or if you're going to both, right? You want to have that snack then. Then you have your training session. Post-training session, 
ideally you want to have some sort of small recovery fuel i'm going to go with the standard here chocolate milk because you can't beat it because it's simple it's quick and it's perfect in terms of the ratio then you have your dinner so your dinner again is that full meal all three macronutrients are involved and it's a well-balanced plate at the end of the night if you are still hungry say you had a morning lifting session and you had afternoon training and then you did all your homework at night if you're a little bit hungry at night, it's okay to have an evening snack. The clock, or let's, let's, let's say this, the body doesn't know the clock. So it doesn't have a, a, an internal clock. The body knows I'm hungry and I want food. So if it's past eight o'clock, it's okay to have some sort of um, maybe higher fat, high protein snack before you go to bed. In fact, that'll help a lot of you sleep a little bit better. Um, I do have a list of those snacks that I'd be happy to provide the club with, and maybe we can send that out later on. So three big meals, two to three meals a snack. That is an ideal day for an athlete. So, so what are some of the things I should eat before I go work out? Um, so your pre-workout snacks or meals are going to be something that's higher in carbohydrates, moderate protein, limited fat. What you wanna do is you wanna ramp up your blood sugar with a solid carbohydrate and then provide protein for the re post recovery, so that initial recovery phase. So on this next slide, <clears throat> I've got a couple pairings here. Um, so you can see on this side, let's just take, let's take a simple one. Um, Apple slices, right? That's carbohydrate. Granola, that's carbohydrate, a little bit of protein, and then some peanut butter. That's going to be protein and a little bit of fat. So this is a perfect snack before you go work out. Or if you want to sub the granola and put it on bread and just call it a peanut butter sandwich with some apple slices, that works as well. Right here in the middle, you've got carbohydrate plus protein. Notice carbohydrate is a little bit bigger because that's what you want the majority of your snack to be. On this side, um, these are some protein bars that I, I'm gonna say, I'll say recommend, that I recommend um, for athletes because they have a higher, a little bit higher ratio of carbohydrates to protein and they're a little bit lower in sugar. So the sugar in most of these is innate sugar, which means it's just part of the fruit that's inside. The only one that I would uh, semi caution you on or, or check the label is the cliff bar. Those are typically laden with laden with added sugar, but they're great for um, pre intense workout. So if you're in an ECL, ECNL weekend or a tournament weekend and you've got game morning, game night, those would be good because you're burning so many calories. Um, so these are, this is kind of how I pray the snacks. And again, I have another document that is helpful when trying to prep snacks. And the word prep is key because if you don't prepare yourself uh, with pr prepared snacks, you'll end up eating kind of whatever's laying around. So, what uh, what if we have a tournament or an event? Um, what should we eat, and and at what what's the timing of what when we should eat it? Good. So um, when and what you should eat before an event. I'm going to keep it very broad here. This is an area that Ajit's going to dive into a little bit more. Before um, an event, which could be a training session, game, or workout, you want to try to have a larger meal three to four hours before the event. So that's the my plate meal with everything involved, but you want it to be a little bit higher in carbohydrates. So that's three to four hours. As you get closer to the event, say one to two hours, you want to have a smaller, high, higher carb, moderate protein snack, which is what we just talked about. So it would look like the snacks on the previous slide. And then if you get right before the game, like 10 minutes before kickoff and you feel like you're a little bit hungry, something high carb, very quick to digest fuel would be great. Um, oranges, I know it's cliche, but oranges are great. Um, even just throwing it back to, to my playing days, um, a blueberry muffin 10 minutes before the game was kind of one of my go-tos because I got that hungry, nervous stomach. So it's okay 
to eat just before. Um, when you when you're planning your your weekends, so your tournament weekends, this is where this can be thrown off. So if you have an 8 a.m. game and then you have a 12 game, 12 p.m. game, you want to get up. You're going to have to get up fairly early and try to have breakfast by six. So that would be a smaller breakfast. Then you're going to play your game, be done by about 9.30, 9.45, get an immediate snack into you, and then go have another small meal, maybe like a six-inch sub, go play your next game. And after your second game, that's when you have that large my plate meal. So timing is very based off of what events you have throughout the day. Um, and again, Ajit will break this down even further next time. Okay, so um, obviously I am not a vegetarian or a vegan, uh, but uh, I, we get this question a lot is, um, how can you be a vegetarian or a vegan and be an athlete? So it, it is definitely possible to be a vegetarian and an elite athlete. I, I also get this question a lot. There are multiple ways that you can incorporate different kinds of, let me back up here. The, the issue with trying to be a vegetarian and an athlete is you, some people are afraid they don't get enough protein. It is absolutely possible to get protein from other sources besides um, meat, chicken, and fish, and even dairy. Some people even cut dairy out. Legumes are, an, are a great source of protein. Soy, tofu, all of those nuts, seeds, all of those can be used in a vegetarian diet to meet your protein needs. Like I said before, protein needs are not as high as many people think they are. Um, so it's absolutely possible to do this, but it takes planning. If being a vegetarian and being an elite athlete is something that you want to do, I would advise you to reach out to myself or another dietitian for specific advice because it it is possible, but it takes work and it takes planning and preparing. Um, and I also have, again, another um, article that I think we'll probably roll out later on about being a vegetarian and an athlete. Good. Well, I think we have one more. So one more question, um, and then we will open it up. Um, if you guys in the audience want to start putting some questions, I see some in the chat, but if you want to put them in the Q&A, we, uh, we will get to some more questions for, from you guys. Um, so one more is, is gluten bad for you? Oh, I love this question. So this question comes up a lot because of the media, essentially. So gluten is not bad for you unless you have something called celiac disease. Celiac disease causes the... Um, causes your intestines to basically stop functioning, right? If you ingest gluten. Not everyone has celiac disease. If you don't have celiacs, gluten is not harmful to you. You could potentially have something called a gluten intolerance where you don't really digest gluten well and you might notice um, some issues when you in, in, ingest a lot of it, but still, it's not bad for you. Gluten is a, comp is a component <clears throat> of wheat, so it's in a lot of those high carbohydrate foods that we as athletes need. So my answer to this question is don't be afraid of gluten unless you have been to the doctor and you've been diagnosed with some kind of celiac disease or gluten intolerance. Gluten will not make you gain weight. That's another question I get off as well. Okay, it's not going to make you gain weight. Make, making you gain weight is eating more calories than you're burning off. Okay, so main message, gluten's fine unless you have a medical problem with it. So some questions now from the audience. Uh, we've got Nola asking uh, how to prevent cramps while running. How to prevent cramps while running. So that's going to be a couple of different categories. The first one that I, would, that I would go to is your hydration status. So we talked about hydration earlier. So maintaining a steady intake of fluid throughout each day is, is key when you're trying to be active. 
if you get up in the morning and you're like, oh, I want to go for a run and you drink a bottle of water, but the day before you had um, only two bottles of water, you're probably going to cramp because your body has utilized all the water you've given it and now you're putting extra exertion on it and it has no uh, hydration to pull from. Another area that we might go to is our electrolyte balance, which is what Gatorade gives you. Food also gives you a lot of that. Um, sodium, potassium, magnesium, calcium, all of those are involved in the functioning and the firing of muscles. A lot of people think it's just sodium, um, or excuse me, it's just potassium, which is bananas. So we think cramping, we think bananas, which yeah, it absolutely might be, but there's other issues that could be, that could be influencing that. So Nola, I would say maintain proper hydration throughout each day throughout the week. And then try to make sure you're in, you're taking in a wide variety of fruits, vegetables um, throughout your days. So this is a good question. We get this a lot from all different levels. Um, certainly our academy players who may play a game and then uh, turn around and play a game right away or have a game off and then play right away. What should players eat in between games? Oh, that's a great question. So we, I kind of brushed over that. Um, if you are, let's, let's go back to that eight o'clock and then that noon game. So you're finishing your first game at 930 and you've got two and a half hours until your next game. You're going to want to have a high carbohydrate, moderate protein, limited, limited fat meal, which would look something like a, uh, let's just, let's keep it simple. So we go down the street to Subway, we get a small six inch sub with turkey, um, lettuce, vegetables, limited mayo, if we really want mayo, some mustard for flavor. And then we have a bag of pretzels, a bottle of water and a Gatorade. Yeah, that's a very simple, quick snack to recover from game one and prepare you for game two. Another option is to, is to bring the coolers. So parents, if you want to pack a cooler before the game so you can just sit on the side of, side of the field, you can pack um, snacks so you can do, or excuse me, you can pack sandwiches so you can build your own sandwiches. PB&J would fall into that category. If you wanted to keep it kind of like snack style, you could do the pretzels, you could bring some hummus to go with it, um, lots of fruit, so oranges, apples, grapes, all of those would be great for them to just sit and snack on as they're preparing for the next game. One thing with that is I would try to stop consumption at least an hour before taking the field. That's a good question. So uh, Jacob is asking, is it bad to work out at night? No, it is not bad to work out at night. Um, workouts throughout the day are based on your body's in your body's clock. So some people like to get up at five in the morning and work out. Some people like to wait until after school and work out before, um, uh, before winding down for the night. The only issue, um, uh, Jacob, I don't know how old you are. The only issue with that is more than likely you've got to get up the next day fairly early. So once you work out in the evening, you want to leave yourself a two hour window to kind of let your body wind down. Because if you're working out at eight o'clock at night, you're done at nine, 10, you still are probably gonna be pretty wound up until about midnight, then you gotta get up again at seven in the morning. So working out in the evening is not bad for you, but it goes back to that sleep pattern. You have to make sure you're maintaining good sleep habits, trying to get those six to eight hours in each night. Okay, another one from our audience. Is it okay to have a really high metabolism? Yeah, that is absolutely okay. But you, um, so a lot of people would be jealous of you. If you have a high metabolism, you have to consume more than your friends. So if you're sitting at the lunch table with your friends and they're eating um, half, of, half a piece of chicken, a small salad and a bag of pretzels, you need that whole piece of chicken. You need two things of vegetables. You need an apple, you need an orange, you need some Gatorade, right? You've got to fuel yourself because you're gonna use more than the person that's sitting next to you. 
Now it's important to remember that you have a high metabolism, but you got to put it to good use, meaning you have to take in good nourishment. So just because you have a high metabolism doesn't mean you get to have cookies, cake, and ice cream all the time. The things you put in are still important. You just need more of the proper fuel that we've been talking about this whole time. Okay, this is from Grace. Um, is Gatorade Zero healthier than regular Gatorade? Um, Gatorade Zero is made with sugar substitutes, so sweeteners. For athletes, absolutely not. Um, for athletes, you guys need straight up Gatorade because you need the carbohydrates that are in the Gatorade to fuel you through your workouts and your games and refuel you post-workout and game. But remember, Gatorade is or uh, carbohydrate drinks, you need them with activity that's lasting an hour or more. So if you're going outside and you're doing um, a walk around the park and then you chug a bottle of Gatorade, that's not the ideal time to consume that bottle of Gatorade. Okay? Save the Gatorade and the carbohydrate rich fuel drinks for high exertion activities an hour or more? That's a good question. Okay. Um, from Christy, uh, she has a lot of allergies and are uh, gluten free. Um, what are some good snacks and proteins to eat? So we have a lot of allergies, but we're and we're gluten free. Um, so when I'm thinking gluten free, I like to snack on a lot of fruits and vegetables. So I'm going to say apples, bananas, and peanut butter. You probably have a nut allergy if you have a lot of allergies. So you could try a different alternative. So you could try a sunflower butter. Then you could do um, Greek yogurt, unless you have a dairy intolerance, then we can shift that over to a different kind of yogurt. Um, hummus. And then, um, hummus, string cheese, those are all high protein things that we can consume. If we're looking on the carbohydrate side, we're looking at all those fruits and vegetables, but then we're also incorporating more of those legumes. So your black beans, your pinto beans, your cannellini beans, all of those and creating, what I like to create are a lot of um, um, salads with beans. So blending beans with tunas, or blending beans with some kind of salmon, things like that can really create good side dishes that are gluten-free, still high carbohydrate snacks and meals. Um, if you want to, if you have further, if you want further information on that, again, I would be happy to kind of sit down and, or go back and forth one-on-one -on -one with that one because that having a lot of allergies to food can get a little bit tricky. So that's a great question. Okay. Uh, what kind of bad ingredients, quote unquote, bad ingredients should we look for in our food? Um, I like to stay away from the term good and bad food. Um, I said it earlier and I was kind of cringing as I said it because Food in general is not good or bad. It's the amount that we take in throughout the day. But if we're looking at foods on, let's say, on, on labels, so if I'm looking at a food label, let's look at um, a box of cereal. So cereal is going to have sugar in it. It's going to have carbs, fat, and protein. The area that we kind of want to focus on is the added sugars. So labels now are required to have add, added sugar on the label. We want to avoid, um, nah, that's, that's intense. We want to try to avoid foods that are nine grams or more of added sugar. And when I'm saying foods, I'm talking mostly about your processed foods. So your cereals, your bars, um, your crackers, things like that. So if you, if you want to label it bad, I would say mo more so just focus on the added sugars in your foods. The innate sugars are gonna be all over fruits and vegetables. And we're not trying to get rid of those, we're trying to keep those in our diet. Good question too. Okay, so another question is, um, what, how would you eat differently if it's a home game versus a game where you might be in a car two or three hours? 
Um, so we're talking about traveling. Ideally, what I, what I like to tell players is have your meal. So have your pregame meal that you know that's your go-to. That's what I'm always going to consume. Um, for me, it was always peanut butter and jelly with granola and then some kind of fruit. Have that meal, and then that's portable, and you can take it with you. Okay, let's change gears. Let's say we don't – we like to change things up all the time. Totally fine. So your pregame meal at home where you're having it cooked for you, you still are going to follow that my plate. So you're going to have half your plate fruits and vegetables, but the carbohydrate side is going to be a, bit, a little bit bigger, which you can pack in a lunchbox as well. So if we're going on the road, we want to pack for ourselves ahead of time, and we want to have, let's call, let's go with um, a, I'm just going to keep it simple, two slices, whole grain, uh, whole grain bread, hummus, um, four to five ounces of turkey, and then vegetables. Then on the side, you've got um, some orange slices, some grapes, a small Gatorade, a water, and a bag of pretzels. Okay. That would be an easy go-to breakfast for, or excuse me, meal in the car that fills those my plate circles. If you needed to stop somewhere, so you didn't have anywhere, um, or you didn't have, you did not prepare and bring it with you. There's a lot of good options on the road as well. So obviously Subway, um, Chick-fil-A is a great option. So it, let's go with Chick-fil-A. You can do, um, they have the, naked tenders and they have the grilled chicken sandwich what i would avoid if you're trying to consume a pre-game meal on the road is french fries you can have a few of them in moderation but a highly a high fat intake at that time is really going to sit in your stomach and you're going to feel it when you play later on so maybe you sub out the french fries for um, two fruit cups and then you have the sand the sandwich to go with it so it's doable eating out but it's probably better to prepare and bring a cooler when you're going on the road and you don't have the luxury of being at home to create your pre-game meal. Okay. Are there, some, are there some breads and pastas that are better than others? For breads and pastas, we wanna aim for whole grain because we get more bang for our buck. So with, um, with white bread, just straight up white bread, it's very, it's more refined and more processed. So they take all of the fiber out of it, which is essential to our diet and the protein, which we've said many times we need in our diet. So consuming whole grain pastas and whole grain breads will just increase the value or um, increase the nutrient density is what we call it and it will increase your caloric intake, which as athletes, you need more calories than the person sitting next to you. So while it's not bad, again, to consume a refined bread or a fine pasta, it would be a better choice to consume whole grain. Okay. Uh, would you recommend players, especially the older players, track their macros, track what they're eating? Um, I think it would be, I think it would be beneficial to a point. Um, and when I say to a point, it be, it's because we want to avoid it becoming kind of an all consuming thing. I would say if you want to track it, you track it for a solid week and then you see what your eating pattern is. And once you've tracked it for a week and you see your eating pattern and you see that you're falling into the macros, then you've developed a habit. And once you develop the habit of eating, you're, you can easily maintain that habit because you know what you put in on Monday, you know how you felt, you saw it on paper, and then you know what you had on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, all through the week. So tracking is definitely a good idea, but I would not take it to in a, um, in a I don't want to say this, I would not take it to the extreme, right? So maybe just for a week and then let it sit follow your habits, then maybe try again in a month or two and see if your habits are the same or if your needs have changed because now you're in season or you're out of season or you got injured, then we could retrack and start over if we need to. All right, so obviously we don't have school right now, um, but this question is from uh, Coach Sterling. What would be a good school lunch if there was a game right after school? 
Ah, good school lunch. Okay, so let me go, let me go to the cafeteria in my head here. So if we're looking at the school lunch and I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna go to the sandwich line. So I'm going to the sandwich line, I'm gonna get a wrap. So I'm gonna get a full wrap. A lot of people think wraps are low in carbohydrates, they're not. So you're still getting a good chunk of carbohydrates in your wrap. So on my wrap, I'm going to put a little bit of mustard. I'm going to put um, four or five ounces of turkey. I might even throw a little bit of chicken on there as well, just to boost my protein. All the vegetables I can think of, so I'm a full wrap. Then I go over, I've got sliced fruit, so I'm going to put a quarter of my plate with that sliced fruit. And then I'm also going to come over and get some, let's go with, I want a side salad. Yeah, we'll go with some steamed broccoli that's in the hot line. Then we come off to the side and we'll grab a, let's grab an apple and then maybe a little container of peanut butter to go with it. And then a water and some milk at the end of the day. So that's a big meal. I know that's a big meal, but if you've got a game at the end of the day, you are not going to have a lot of time from end of school to game time to to take in the amount of food that you need? That's a good question. All right, it looks like uh, those are most of our questions uh, from our audience. All right. Oh, I'm frozen. All right, well, we would uh, definitely like to thank Coach Laura for, for taking time out of her, of her day. Um, and sharing with us uh, all about nutrition uh, and all about how to fuel your bodies properly. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. This has been really fun. You guys have been great. Thanks for um, joining in and answering my questions and giving me all the questions that you can think of. So this has been great. Thank you, Jeff. Okay, well, this wraps up our uh, nutrition part one of our TSC webinar series. Uh, as uh, Coach Laura alluded to, uh, part two will be coming up with uh, Dr. Ajit uh, in two weeks on, uh, I believe, April 29th. Um, so tune in at 6 p.m. then. Uh, tomorrow evening, or excuse me, tomorrow afternoon at 2 p.m., uh, the goalkeepers will have um, Adelaide Gay, um, a professional goalkeeper. Um, she's coming to us from Europe. Um, she will be on a fireside chat at 2 p.m. Uh, and then at 6 p.m., Jane Campbell uh, will be coming to us from the Houston Dash. Uh, so tune in to our uh, TSC webinar series uh, tomorrow, uh, two times for that. And then we'll be back next week uh, on uh, Wednesday and Thursday night again. First, just wanted to say thank you again to, to Coach Laura and uh, have a good night. Thanks, Jeff. See you guys.